Hello, I hope you are doing well. My name is Jacqueline Vino from Galasso Learning Solutions and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. Today, what we are going to discuss is the 2024 ACFE Report to the Nations. The report is based on the results of a global fraud survey, which is basically an online survey of certified fraud examiners that was conducted between July and September of last year. Respondents were asked to provide information about the largest occupational fraud cases that they had investigated that met various criteria. Basically, respondents were presented with 86 different questions regarding the details of their fraud cases, including information about the perpetrator, the victim organization, and also the different methods of fraud that were employed, as well as fraud trends in general that we are seeing in the overall environment. What we are going to review during this blog are basically what some of those key findings on the report were. And as you can see here, the report was issued on March 20th of 2024, and it is actually the 13th edition of the largest global study on occupational fraud. And it is based on 1,921 actual real cases of occupational fraud. And the data was collected across 138 different countries and territories. Additionally, 22 major industry categories were also included in their research, and the report also explores the various costs, schemes, victims, and perpetrators of fraud. The key finding in this report is that there was unfortunately total losses of more than $3.1 billion that were relating to occupational fraud. Additionally, certified fraud examiners estimate that organizations lose approximately 5% of their revenue every single year to fraud. Additionally, the median loss per case is $145,000, and the average loss per case is $1.7 million, which is just so crazy. And occupational fraud schemes fall into three primary categories. So we have asset misappropriation, we have corruption, and financial statement fraud. Asset mis misappropriation cases involve an employee essentially stealing or misusing the employing organization's resources. And as you can see, this is by far the most common category of occupational fraud, occurring in 89% of the cases in their study. These cases also tend to cause, luckily, the lowest median loss at $120,000 per case. Also, nearly half of the cases in their study involved some sort of corruption. These cases caused a median loss of $200,000 per case. And financial statement frauds, in which a perpetrator intentionally caused a material misstatement or omission in the organization's financial statements, these were the least common category, luckily, representing about 5% of schemes, but they also caused the greatest median loss of $766,000 per case. While occupational frauds tend to be divided into these three distinct categories, unfortunately, perpetrators do not always limit their schemes to just one category at a time. Uh, for instance, 38% of cases involved two or more types of occupational fraud, with the most common overlap usually happening between asset misappropriation and corruption. Interestingly, only 1% of cases in the study involving financial statement fraud alone, um, this basically indicates that when a person has been caught committing financial statement fraud, it's also very likely that they've been committing other types of frauds as well. And one thing to note in the 2024 report, um, basically it includes cases that were investigated between January of 2022 and September of 2023. So as the typical occupational fraud case lasts 12 months before ever being detected, that means that the majority of cases in their study likely occurred during the height of the pandemic. 53% of cases in the 2024 report had at least one pandemic-related factor that contributed to the occurrence of the fraud. The report lists several causes for this, right, such as the shift to working from home, supply chain disruptions that were occurring, right, there was various computer chip shortages that were also going on during the pandemic. There were organizational staffing changes, obviously internal controls were changing since people were working remotely, and also operational process changes as well. So that did present a great opportunity for perpetrators to go in and exploit these organizations. After seeing a decline in fraud losses over several studies, unfortunately, the median losses of frauds that occurred during the pandemic definitely increased notably, even while the time to detection did not change, right? So it takes still about 12 months to detect that fraud, but median losses were up 24% from 2022 up until 2024. So very unfortunate there that perpetrators were able to take advantage of the situation. 
Another interesting find that I wanted to point out was uh, different frauds relating to cryptocurrency. With the increased you know, use of cryptocurrencies, uh, organizations and also anti-fraud professionals must be aware of how these types of assets might affect occupational fraud risks. Only 4% of cases in their 2024 study involved cryptocurrency. However, nearly half of those cases uh, basically included the perpetrator converting their stolen assets into cryptocurrency. And 33% involved bribery or kickback payments that were made to a co-conspirator in cryptocurrency. So although only 4% of cases involved cryptocurrency, of those cases, right, a significant amount involved some sort of occupational fraud relating to cryptocurrency. Early detection of frauds is also critical to limiting the amount of damage that can cause the victim organization. The median duration of the occupational frauds in this study was, as previously stated, 12 months. However, the longer the fraud continues, right, the more it's going to cost the victim. Frauds caught within the first six months have a median loss of only $30,000 compared to $250,000 for frauds that last between two and three years. Cases that went undetected for five or more years cause a median loss of $875,000. Additionally, what's interesting is that 43% of frauds are actually detected by tips, which is more than three times as many cases as the next most common method. So tips are incredibly important. And how the breakdown of this works is more than half of tips come from employees and nearly one third come from vendors and customers. Interestingly as well, the most common mechanisms to report fraud are typically via email or by a web-based application. So email and web-based reports both surpassed telephone hotlines for reporting a tip. According to the ACFE report, nonprofit organizations also experience losses that are half the size of those at other types of organizations. The report also broke down the top five median losses by industry, with the mining industry, wholesale trade, manufacturing, construction, and also real estate having the greatest median losses compared to other types of industries. Additionally, the ACFE report also has a lot of really interesting information on fraud perpetrators. As you can see, the median losses for fraud by owners and executives was more than seven times greater than those carried out by employees. Additionally, and this makes a lot of sense, the number of perpetrators also has an impact on the losses. Frauds carried out by you know, three or more perpetrators caused a median loss that was more than four times greater than those that were carried out by one single perpetrator. And not surprisingly, the longer a fraudster had worked for the organization, the more costly that their fraud was. And 84% of fraudsters displayed at least one behavioral red flag. There's also a section of the report that covers various anti-fraud controls. Um, this makes a lot of sense that the presence of anti-fraud controls is definitely associated with lower fraud losses and also faster detection. 82% of victim organizations ended up modifying their anti-fraud controls following an instance of occupational fraud. And 27% of these modifications are expected to be extremely effective in preventing similar types of fraud in the future. We also cannot ignore the fact that more than half of occupational frauds were able to occur due to some sort of lack of internal controls. For example, more specifically, 32% were due to a just a complete lack of an internal control and 19% resulted from an override of an existing control. So internal controls are definitely a very important piece of this puzzle. Additionally, the report presents statistics on how occupational fraud cases were resolved. So 68% of fraudsters were terminated by their employees, which are, makes sense, um, and 57% of cases involved law enforcement. Of the cases that were referred to law enforcement, 72% resulted in a conviction. Of those organizations that chose not to involve law enforcement, the reason why was also cited in the, in the report. So 49% of cases cited internal discipline as the reason that they chose not to report this to law enforcement. And 34% of organizations cited a fear of bad publicity or you know, damage to reputation as a reason for not involving you know, the police or law enforcement. And that concludes today's Genuine Learning blog. It's always super interesting to talk about fraud and also read these reports. Once again, my name is Jacqueline from Galasso Learning Solutions, and I hope to see you again on a future blog. Thank you and have a great day.